ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. We're going to be continuing the beginner tutorial. Tonight we're going to take a look at uh, field preparation. So I have my handy dandy red tractor and I'm going to take this guy and disconnect the trailer that's attached to it. And I'm going to run down. You could also use the pickup truck to pull that trailer, but the pickup will struggle. It's so small. The pickup truck, honestly, if it were me, I'd just sell it. Um, later on, it becomes useful when you really need to get around the farm quickly. But right now, everything's pretty compacted in the game, and so um, you don't really need it as of yet. Um, oh, by the way, uh, for those of you that are new to the game and don't know this yet, there are um, gold nuggets in the game hidden around the map. If you find all 100 gold nuggets, uh, and there, I don't think Soznovka has it, and I don't think Estancia Lapacha has it either. I think this is the only map that has it, Goldcrest. If you find the 100 gold pieces, you get a million dollars. So uh, after you find the first 10 hidden pieces, which are hidden all over the map, um, they appear on your map down in the left-hand corner. So you can walk around the map, and you see them. They'll be highlighted, and uh, you can find the other 90 using the highlights on the map. So they make it pretty easy. It's just finding those first 10. I would recommend you look around the farm. On this map, look around the train facilities. Bridges, hint, hint. Water towers, hint, hint. There's not a whole lot of them in town, hint, hint. <laughs> and some of them are just in the woods, hint, hint. But for the most part, uh, around the farm and then around, just if you walk around the train tracks across the whole map, you'll find enough to get the nine, the 10 that you need to show the rest of them. So there is a gold hunt that's a little bit of fun. One of the things that people don't like about this game is that you do have to drive quite a long distance uh, to get here. Uh, and one of the problems with this game is that you can no longer buy seed at the farm. You have to buy it here and then transport it back. Um, I do have a, a tutorial on how to put the seed into tippers. Uh, and so I would honestly, once you start getting money rolling in, I would suggest buying two or three tippers and using that to transport seed and fertilizer back to the farm and just using those as seed and fertilizer tenders. Um, or an auger wagon works even better because you can auger it back out into the cedar without having to uh, shovel, do any shoveling or anything like that. But Okay, so we've arrived here at Morgan's Massive Motors. We're going to go talk to our sales guy, quote-unquote, and rent a plow. Uh, once again, you don't have to buy the plow, but I'd recommend at least renting it. Um, we're not so there's no loans going to. We'll do some loan action in the next video when we go to do fertilization. Um, but we have a plow here. This is the one that I recommend for your current tractor setup. This guy's a smaller. It's not reversible, so you have to go in laps if you want to make make it realistic. You have to actually go in big loops around the field. This guy works like a modern plow. Uh, this one's even bigger. Um, this is going to be really heavy, like probably too heavy for your current tractor. Um, and this guy you can't even pull. I mean, you could pull it, but technically you'd be in real life you'd be ripping your tractor to shreds. This one's a good fit, though. So let's go ahead and select this one. Instead of clicking buy, it's $15,000. I'm going to lease it. So you can see here we have a $1,200 fee to begin with. Um and then there's an operating hour and a per day. So these this initial cost is $1,200. That's these three fees put together. Each additional hour is $750. So once you start using it, use it as quickly as possible <laughs> once you lease it. Like try to get it done as fast as possible. Now somebody t told me that they don't charge you for hours that you're not using it, but I think they do. I'm not sure about that though. Um, oh, and another thing, while we're here at the vehicle shop, this is where you buy stuff and it shows up here and then you can take it back to your farm. Uh, if you need to modify or uh, sell a tractor or any piece of equipment, you put it in this square here and you come over to this and press the activation button and you can see here I can sell the tractor. This is worth 29. Remember I showed you in the menu it was worth less, right? So if we go into our, our menu and I go to garage and I go to sell the tractors, this is 24 and this is 18, right? So I think we're in this one, the 28 hours. Let's see. So we get $4,000 just for bringing it down here. Um, so it's worth it to bring it down. You can also customize the tractor. Some of the options that you have, you can get bigger wheels. Um, you can get, this one only has wide tires and standards. Sometimes on some of the tractors, you can get double wheels in the back, double wheels all over. Uh, you can get narrow tires for fertilizing without damaging crops. You can also add a front loader. Now, they charge you a $1,000 shop fee. Every single place you go has a $1,000 shop fee. 
later on in the game, if you have some money, which you will, um, you can buy one of these shops. Under placeables, there's a lizard vehicle workshop. Once you've placed this on your farm, you go there instead, and you can do all those mod. They charge you the first time for the modification. So let's say I want to go from regular tires to wide tires. The wide tires are going to cost $800, but there's no service fee. Then, from that point forward, I can switch between my narrow tires and my wide tires without paying any fees. So this vehicle workshop is very handy to have. A lot of mod farms give you them for free. They'll have like a, a garage or some sort of facility where you can go to where it's free to have the change so you don't have to pay for this. That kind of helps. It's nice. But on the Giants maps, you have to pay for this to get it. So um, there you go. But that's the customization area. So let's go ahead. We've leased our plow. It's sitting out in the parking lot there, as you can see. And we're going to back in and pick that thing up. Do, 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 do. Okay, so we're going to slowly back in here. And you're going to see this little icon appear. Once again, I've showed you that last time, the attach icon down on the bottom right. Watch it again. So I get close to the plow, that little attach icon will appear. And then I press this button and I reconnect. And it raises the plow. All right. Now, plows are interesting because you can not only plow your fields with them, but you can create new fields. Now, um, it can be messy if you turn that on by mistake and you start plowing and you cut up your field. It's it, I've done it before. We're going to make a little mess over here because I think it's kind of funny. Uh, if I go over here into this grass that I don't own, but it's public property, sort of. It's this guy's house. I'm going to mess up his house. Um I go into my menu here, and you can see it says allow. See that thing says allow create fields. I click that. That's and now it's going to create fields. And next time I press it, it'll limit it back to fields. So if I lower my plow, watch what happens. Ooh, I tore up your backyard. <laughs> and it's not doing a perfect job because this is really not where you're supposed to be doing this. But um, I can plow his yard and destroy it, and it, I've made a field. Now I've done that. It's forever going to be a field, and. You have to buy it. There's a special roller they sell that you can buy that will reset it back to default. So if I go into the shop menu again, and I'm not going to do this, but um, I think it's under miscellaneous. Yep. There's a lizard roller. If I roll this over the part that I just plowed, it'll set it back to the way it was originally. So the map knows where this stuff goes, um, and you can reset it by using this thing. You can either buy it or lease it. But uh, if I wanted to fix what I just did to that guy's yard, I'd have to go get one of those and fix it. So I'm going to put it back on limit to fields now. If I go over here and I start to plow again, and we'll go in a new spot where she can see it, um, you'll notice that I don't have the ability to chop this ground up. It'll just sink in and do nothing. See that? So now it doesn't do anything. But when I get on my field, it still will. So just drove right through that tree because it's invisible. All right, folks, so I will catch up with you once I get back to the farm. Here we go. Now, you'll notice that I haven't done anything else to these fields. Like, we could have cultivated that field, but we're going to plow it first. It's, you, you always plow first. Um, if you don't want to collect that straw, you can always plow it under, but we will. I'll go over that in a little bit because I think that's important that we cover that because you can make some serious money. That's probably going to – there's probably actually about $2,000 of straw or more on that field. Um, so – we don't own anything right now that can collect it, but it might be worth buying something down the road if you're going to grow straw quite a bit. And you can use it to feed your cows or keep it for yourself. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to flip the plow because it's in the wrong orientation. The second thing I'm going to do is move this New Holland out because it's in the way. So we're going to back this down. And we're going to take this and pull on up to the field. Now you've noticed I flipped it so that the plow is facing out in the game. You don't have to worry about which way you're going, but it's easier if you do this and then you can kind of set your wheel where you want it to plow. So I'm going to put the wheel right on the edge of the field and I put the plow down. Once again, it's on limit, so it's not going to chop up my field. It's just going to plow the field portion. You can see it doesn't go past there. It just goes along the field. And I make, say, make sure I stay as straight as I can along the edge here. And I start plowing all this crap under. Now, plowing is probably the most tedious part of this game, um, definitely, because you don't get a lot done with each pass. Um, but it is realistic, and farmers do have to do it. Once you get bigger tractors, you can get bigger plows. It goes a little bit faster, but they're, it's never quick. Plus, it, you know, actually, we're plowing at 9 miles an hour, which seems like that's really fast. I think in real life, tractors usually plow at about 2 or 3, maybe 5. Um, 
I'm gonna back up. And then what we do is, here's how we do it if you want to be realistic. So I flip the plow so it's facing out again. We always want to keep that to the edge that we're the open plow. And you can see, you'll, you'll be able to figure it out as you do it. The more you do it, the more you just it becomes natural. But I flipped it, and I'm going to put my wheels in that first furrow. And we're going to go ahead and run down the field. And you can see here we're making a nice furrow. Um, there is a little bit of ground. Actually, no, it's flat. Um, I have a mod that allows you the tractor to go into the field a little bit, so it feels a little bit more like you're on real ground. It's called ground response. Um, so the tractor actually tips into the field a little bit more, but giants in their flat fields, <laughs> flat terrain. See, I missed a spot there. Oh, well, life will go on because the cultivator will get that. But now, so you can see here, once we've done this, you can see here, if we go onto our map, if you remember from the last tutorial, I was showing you the field states. I put plowing on. You can see that that little a bit doesn't even show up yet. <laughs> You can see a little teeny blank line here, but as we work, it'll that'll get wider and wider until the whole field is covered. This is going to bother me forever because I'm just that picky. I'm going to go back here and rerun over this spot just because I want that to be gone. Perfect. There we go. Clean that up. Perfect. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to hire a worker and let him keep doing this, and we'll talk about cultivation next. So we're going to get this back up here. Which way does it go? Is the plow facing the right way? Anyone? Anyone? If you said yes, you failed. Uh, the plow needs to flip, so we're going to rotate the plow. And then we're going to drop the plow. And I'm going to press the cruise control. And I'm actually going to hire a worker at this point and let him take over. I'm going to hop out, and there he goes. So the next stage after you've plowed, and once again, you only have to plow once every three harvests. So keep an eye on your field map, but if you don't remember, you can always check the map and look and see if it's red, it needs to be plowed. If it's not, then it doesn't matter. You can see there he's starting to make a dent. See these dents here? He's starting to make a dent in that field. Uh, and as we get done, you'll see it totally be not red. <laughs> All three of these fields need this, by the way. So. Uh, next step is the cultivation. So we have a cultivator on the back. You know, of course, once again, these vary in size. You can use a, the cultivators usually don't require as much horsepower as the plow does, and it's a little wider, so you'll get done faster. The hard thing is if you got a guy working on the plow, you're going to catch up to him real fast. Um, so we're going to drop the cultivator, and now we're going to run over this, and you'll see the field texture change where I've run over it. With these smaller ones, you kind of have to eyeball it. It also does help um, in the smaller tractors if you put a weight on the front. The cases already have weights built in, but the new Holland does not. Um, so I'm doing this without a weight. I'm doing fine. I've got a steering wheel, so that helps a lot. But See here, nice cultivated line. And so this is how you prep your fields. Once you're done cultivating, you're ready to sow. And I'll show you that stick, stage stick. I'll stick it, stick it, stick it, stick it, stick it. Uh, we'll show you that stage next. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Hey, we all have our moments, don't we? No one's perfect. I'm definitely far from perfect. I'm actually pretty flawed, but that's okay. So, there we go. I'm going to put my wheel in that socket right there. I'm kind of one like one wheel over. This one's a little bit opposite of the plowing, where I'm looking on the side where I actually plowed before, or cultivated before. I'm keeping my wheel in that furrow so I know that I'm going straight and not making wiggly lines. And that's it. That's, that's it to cultivation. So, we've got plowing and cultivating. And uh, I'm, you can see I'm already catching up to the plow. He needs two more passes for my one. Um, but the speed's the same, so we're, you know, it just takes him longer. So we're going to let him work for a little while, and then we'll hire a worker on this guy, and I'll show you the seating. While we're waiting for that guy to work, we're going to hop into one of the other tractors. You can use your tab key if you're on the computer. Um, and I'm going to show you how to operate this thing. So we're going to pick this up. This is our seeder. Uh, it is full, but... I'm going to show you how to do this anyway. Um, this cedar is nice because it does both fertilizing and planting in one pass. However, it is a very small cedar, and th these fields are going to make you cry after a while. Um, I always One of the first things I do is I take a loan out and buy a bigger cedar. Once I've sold all the equipment, I sell this and buy a bigger one. But that's up to you. All right, here's our consumables. This is what we have to bring up from the shop, and it's kind of a pain. Um, once again, I'll, I'll link that video that shows you my quote-unquote solution for this uh, but these are what they look like these are seed packets this is fertilizer liquid and this is fertilizer solid now we don't have a liquid sprayer right now 
but we do have solid fertilizer in this. So I would recommend also, because um, once again, how many stages do we need? We need three stages of fertilization. Um, so I'm going to recommend that you get a sprayer. And I'm also going to recommend something else, and I'm going to show you what that is right here. All right, so we have one special crop in this thing, in this game. And I'll show you all about it. Um, so first we're going to come here. And we're going we're gonna to see how those opened up. And you press the fill up button, the R button, and it fills up. But it's already full, so. And then as you pull away, you can close that. Same button as closing the back of the trailer. Um, you can use a crop. And unfortunately, with this cedar, it doesn't work so well. Because it actually will put down four stages. So we're not going to do that with this. But um, you can plant a crop called um, oilseed radish. And I think it's the Y button. There we go. The Y button changes the crops. Looks like that, okay? Why oil seed radish, oil seed radish works as a fertilizer, so you get a full stage of fertilization with that. However, the problem is, once again, this cedar has fertilizer in it, so you're actually going to waste fertilizer by doing that, because um, you're going to have two stages when you do this, and then you're going to have two more stages when you plant the crop, right? Oh no, that'd be your third stage. No, so that actually will work. You don't have to buy a liquid fertilizer. So that's three stages because you have two here and then the one on the final. So we're going to plant some some of this stuff here. So I'm gonna, we have oilseed radish. All you do is let it grow one. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So this, it's pretty simple. The oilseed radish will get planted. It grows one stage. So it'll pop out. And then you just plant your other crop. You cultivate it in and plant your other crop over it. So I'll show you that whole process. But we're going to do that tonight. You'll get to see it all. Like, what the heck is he talking about? Well, you get to see it. Because I'm the best tutorial out there. And tell your dang friends about it. Say, this is the best dang tutorial I've ever dang seen. Because he went over everything. Alright, so here we go. Hop in this guy. I'm going to turn the cedar on. Using whatever button you have programmed for that. And I'm going to come up here to the field. And I'm going to lower it down. And I'm planting fertilizer and oil seed radish in one pass. Now, this is hard to tell. Can you tell which one we've done and which we haven't? Nope, I can't either. Uh, one of the things I don't like about the cedar, and when you, when you fertilize from cultivation, it's really hard to tell. Now, you can theoretically just seed what you've plowed. If you want to be tricky about it, <coughs> before, if you plow a field, you don't have to cultivate first. But that's cheating. In real life, you'd have to. There's no way you could plant to a plowed field. The cedar would break. I mean, it's just it's not designed to do plowed dirt. But the game allows you to do that, but we're not going to do that. So what I do instead is, once again, I hire a worker. Um, I hire a worker. Those freaking workers. Because I can't see what I'm doing. So what we need to do is we're going to hop in the other tractor now. We're getting a little... a little. That's going to sound bad. We have a little three tractor thing going on here. That's where we'll leave it at that. And we're going to come over here and we're going to put this up. I'm going to pull right up to the field, and I'm going to hire that worker. Hiya. I'm jumping out, hopping in this tractor, and I'm going to come over here. Once that other guy makes another pass, it's going to be kind of tight here, so I'm just going to wait for him to go because he's got his thing going on. And hire a worker, and I'll let the worker deal with trying to figure out what's done and what's not because I don't want to. Oh, there she goes. Lady. That's the first lady worker, I think. Yep, the other ones are all guys. Uh, so now we have a whole team working for us. This is costing us a ton of money. Uh, the only reason I'm doing it is to get it done quick so you guys can see how it works. Uh, I'm going to let these guys... Um, Ta-da. And off they go. So anyway, um, we'll let them go ahead and finish the field and we will start dealing with fertilization and all that good stuff. The other fields need to be done too, but this, since this is a tutorial, I'm not going to worry about that. Um, but we're going to let these guys finish this work here and then we will catch up with them when they're done and we'll watch the crops grow and fertilize them as needed. Um, so you can see what happened, but you can see here now, if I look at the field map, um, you can see the part that's been plowed. It's no longer red. The red part still needs to be plowed. And then you can see where we've planted. We also have the first stage blue of fertilizer right there. If you match it up, it's that blue right there, that first one. And you can see there that our, that's our first stage because that cedar fertilizes as it goes. And then we're going to cultivate that oilseed radish in, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, and you'll be able to see that process next. So we will catch up once they're done. 
See you guys in just a minute. All right, so it is uh, several hours later. Uh, the sun's going down. And the first stage of our oilseed radish has popped, and that's all you need. You don't have to let it grow any further. That first stage is all you need. So the next step to make this into fertilizer, okay, so don't forget, when we first planted, we laid down fertilizer, and then the oilseed radish grew, and now we're going to cultivate that in for a second stage of fertilizer. If you look at our map right now, uh, we'll take a real quick look and take a look at the soil composition. You can see that we no longer have to plow this field, and it's one stage. Once I run the cultivator over it to get ready for the seeding, you're going to see that that... Um, I'm going to hop in right now and get that started. You'll see that it's going to start turning darker blue where we've cultivated, and that is because this counts as a stage of fertilizer. So let's go ahead and hire a worker. There she goes. And we'll let her run a couple passes, and then we'll take a look at that map, and you'll see that it is uh, cultivated. Now, if you have a cedar that cultivates, it's nice because then you don't have to do like two stages like this where we have to plant and cultivate again. But essentially, this is getting us to our second stage of fertilization. Okay, so I've driven down here to the farm, and I have seed and storage here. So we're going to go ahead and fill this thing up. Um, you have to buy these from the store and, and drive them over using a pickup truck and a trailer or you can load them into a wagon But you don't if you put them in a tipper you'll they they turn into seed you don't get the containers back So you have to load them from that But you can also load them from a pile on the ground. Anyway, we'll pull up near here Fill it up with seed We'll come on over here And we're gonna fill this up with fertilizer and then I'm going to go ahead and close that, those lids. And I'm going to drive on up here where we're cultivating. And you can see, so we've done two stages now. Uh, and so all we need is one more stage of fertilization. The cedar will provide that for us. So since we have fertilizer in here, we're using two unnatural stages. And we're using two solid stages. So that's not really in real life how they would do it. But for the game's purposes, the game is happy. So... If you take a look here at our field, you can see it's starting to turn darker blue as that cultivator is running. Uh, she's making a line there, um, and you'll see here as she goes along here, you get to see the line get wider after she passes, sort of. It's really hard to see, but anyway, that's our second stage of uh, fertilization right there. That's why we grow the oilseed radish. So we have one natural stage and two chemical stages. And so we're going to go ahead and pick our crop. Mm, let's do... Barley. And you'll note this cedar does not do uh, sunflower seeds or corn. It does all the other crops, though. Or uh, sugar beets. So I'm going to go ahead and hire a worker here. And let uh, her get to work. we got two girls running the tractors here. And she's going to go ahead and plant that for us. And so we've... That'll be if we once we see that well, I'll come back in a second here. You guys will see there'll be a third stage of fertilization. In the meantime, though, I'm going to show you how to pick up the straw, the leftover straw that's on the field. So we will be right back. Oh, yeah. And before I forget, um, we have our plow, which we rented. So if I go into here and I go to garage and I go up here and I click on the right button, you can see the least items. And down here, I have the very master 153. That is our plow that we rented. We're going to return that so we don't pay any extra money. I've already paid for it a little bit extra, but. I forgot to return it. However, it was not in use, so I think that does apply because we weren't using it. We actually didn't get charged anything additional. Um, so I'm going to run down to the to the store. We're going to rent another item here, and I'll show you how to do the pickup of the straw. Once again, you don't have to do this. If you're just starting your farm and you don't have a lot of funds and you don't feel like getting the money off the field, this is a totally unnecessary step. You don't have to collect the straw, but I like to do it. Um, because it makes money. Uh, but once again, sometimes you got to spend money to make money. The cheapest way to do it is to do a collection wagon, and we'll go over that here in a second. So I'm going to run down to the shop. I'll see you when I get down there. All right, we've arrived at the shop. We're going to go into the shop again. Hopefully you guys are starting to get the hang of this. I'm going to look here for collection wagons. And that is the collection wagon is what we use to pick up straw or mowed grass. Uh, once again, you can bale it too, but this is a lot cheaper than bailing because there's only one piece of equipment that you have to buy. However, you have to make a lot of trips with it, but it does collect. You can get, obviously, all different sizes. 
We're going to rent the cheapest one. We're going to lease that. We're going to lease it for $2,480. The good news is we will not probably make that back. <laughs> we're probably going to make just about $3,000. So we'll have made $1,000 as long as we return this within an hour. So the goal is to get that done and get it done fast. Once again, I'm hooking up. And you guys should know how to do this by now. Sorry, I got a new keyboard between the first time I recorded this and now. And I also don't have my steering wheel and pedals set up, so you can hear me clicking like crazy. <laughs> I love my new keyboard. It's a Black Widow, like 2016 Black Widow. But it's really clicky <laughs> on the microphone. I didn't think about that when I bought it. I thought, oh, I love mechanical keyboards, which I do. I, I'm a child of the 80s, so I grew up clicking big honking keys. And in this case... Uh, I'm super excited and I love typing on this thing, but it's really loud for my channel. Oops. Oh, well. I have to get like a microphone muffler. It just covers the front of the microphone so it doesn't pick up in the back. So anyway, I will be back shortly. I'm going to run this back up to the farm and I'll show you how to do this while we're in the middle of seeding. But this is what the one of the stages of collecting a harvest is. And it, I would buy one of these pretty quickly. That might be a thing that you get with your loan um, if you're going to keep the original tractors and stuff. And we are back at the farm. We're going to turn this bad boy on by pressing the G, uh, the V key, right? No, it lowers it. B key. And then we're going to press the, so B is in boy, and then V is in Victor to turn it on. That's for the computer users. I don't know what you are on the computer or on the regular. And I'm going to put the cruise control on. You can do this pretty quickly. I think this field yields about three trailer loads. So... Um, We'll see how much a trailer goes for, but it's a decent amount of money, and I'll show you how to sell it, too. So that's all you do with this. You just run back and forth till it's full. Once the thing is full, it'll automatically shut off. You'll hear it, go beep, and you'll start driving faster all of a sudden. You'll be like, wait a minute, why am I driving so fast? Oh, it's full. You can see there it's filling up as we go along here, and it picks it up. Um, you can just dump this anywhere. They have a force dump command uh, that allows you to dump material anywhere on the map. I don't recommend doing it because you're going to have lots of piles of stuff all over the place and messes to clean up. Uh, to me, I just... Sometimes you can to do to store it, but it takes up a lot of space really quick. So, like, this trailer full makes a giant mound of straw. Uh, you're probably better off just selling it off or bailing it if you're going to store it. At that point, you might want to consider getting bailing equipment, but... Um, Anyway, this gives you an idea of what the Euroboss and what these collection wagons do. They're basically in lieu of a baler. However, once they're full, they're full. <laughs> so you will have to either sell, at, you know, if once you, if you, let's say you decide to buy some cows and you need to give them straw. Once you fill up the two places that you use with straw and it's still full of straw, you're better off selling the rest of it because you might need to go pick up some grass to make silage. Anyway, that's a whole other story. If you need help with a tutorial, uh, make sure to see how to feed your cows. It's one of my most popular videos. And uh, talks about everything in this game about feeding cows and keeping your, your cows fed, watered, and, and, and producing at 100%. Um, they don't, by default, just make 100%. They start off at, uh, like, 50 if you just give them grass. So you have to, you have to give them grass and mixed rations and uh, straw, and they have to have all kinds of stuff to, to get to 100%, and I go over that in my video. So anyway, I'm going to finish filling this trailer up, and I will be right back, and we'll show you how to sell this stuff. So, see you in a second. It's beeping. It's full. That's it. I don't know if you guys heard the beep. It'll also, I forgot it beeps, too. It goes beep, 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 so you know it's full. So let's come over here and see if we gain back the money that we spent on leasing this. Once again, you want to, if you're going to lease it, you want to get it done as quick as possible, and then get it returned so you're not paying the leasing fees for the next hour. So we're going to press the dump key, which I think is Y, I, I, okay. And then the force dump, it's control I, it's like the dump where you're not supposed to dump. But we're not going to do that. Uh, so we made 1800 bucks. So yeah, we will make back our $2,400 because uh, what's eight, what's 18, if you get two trailers full, which we're going to, 1800 plus 1800 is uh, 3600 So uh, it cost us 2400 to rent it, so we're going to make at least $1,000 over the top of what it cost to lease. But that's not a very good profit. However, that being said, if you fill up all of these fields with wheat or barley or any kind of straw-producing crop, but wheat or barley is the in-game crops. If you have oats or rye, they also do it. Um, you can then take that, and you can not only do this field, but you can do all three of these fields. You're going to get quite a lot of money 
uh, out of the collection of that material. I mean, we're talking... Let's see here. For these three fields, I'm going to say maybe like $10,000, maybe more. Um, so it's probably at that point worth the rental. Uh, if you're going to buy it, it costs $28,000 to buy this guy. Uh, so it'll take you about three harvest cycles to make the money back. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, I mean, that's how we do it. So um, it may be worth buying it right away and then just paying it off as you go, using it for material collection because it is... The material's there, so I might be wrong. There might only be two trailers full on this field, but still, that's enough to pay for it. But maybe not. Let's see what happens. I'm going to finish this off. I'll see you guys in a sec. Now, you will notice, and one thing I haven't covered yet in this tutorial series, uh, your tractors do, right about now, you're going to be noticing that the gas gauge is missing some fuel. Uh, you do need to fuel your tractors up. There are gas stations located conveniently around the map with a gas symbol above them. You simply pull up next to the pump. And fill the tractor up. They also sell a trailer in the shop. There we go. We're almost full. So we're barely going to make a profit. <laughs> right here we make our first $1,000. Um, 36. It's cost 24 to rent. 36. We're making 1200 bucks right now. Uh, but anyway, there's, a, there's gas stations around the map. If you look on the map here. Um, does it show it? It's not showing it on. Oh, yeah, it does. Okay, so. If you look north of field 7 and 8, which I'm on, you look up, you go, it goes 15, where I'm right next to where I'm at, where I'm flashing, and then 12, and then there's the pig barn, and then field number 7. Above that is a gas station, and so you simply pull in and press the R key, like once you get next to the pump, you'll see a little symbol up here letting you know that you can pump gas, and you're going to fill that bad boy up, and uh, then bring it back home. Uh, once again, the shop, in the shop, they do have a trailer under miscellaneous here, and that's the trailer right there, this with the Harley Davidson looking Thunder Creek equipment symbol. Uh, you can buy this and fill it up at the gas station um, and then park it here on the farm and use it to tender gas to your tractors so that you don't have to leave the farm to get gas because right now obviously you have to leave the farm to get gas so that's a little bit of a pain uh, but you know as long as you remember to fill it up because it will these tractors will run out of gas and when you run out you're stuck. Uh, you'll have to get one of those trailers and fill it up in place or have it reset to the shop but even that doesn't help you because the shop doesn't have gas so uh, you'll find on some of the mod maps and on Soznovka which is the other default map for the game the Russian map Soznovka um, they have gas pumps on them at the farm so Soznovka does Estancia Lapacha does not but lots of mod maps have gas provided for you on the farm that makes life a little bit easier for the beginning farmer so you don't have to drive around and find gas but on this one they decided not to have gas on the farm trying to think. I don't think in FS15 that they did either. I'm pretty sure Westfield did not have gas. Did Bjorn? Yeah, I think I don't think Bjornholm did either. You had to go to the gas station on both of those. So, that's not a new thing in Farm Sim. So, let's see how much we make off of this as we finish up here. And those guys are working diligently on the field. Um, so, we're done with this guy and we're going to return it. Um... We're going to raise this. Now, if it were me playing the game in real life, I would not be doing one field at a time like that. I would get all three fields all at the same place so that I know where everything's at. Sometimes things get out of, oops, out of sync, but other times, you know, it's, it's just easier to maintain it. If you know all the fields are at one state, all the fields are another state, we just made $752. So we made a grand total of almost $2,000 just for the, from that rental. We, we lost $2,400, but we gained $2,000. So, wait. We made 5000 altogether, but minus the rental fees is what I'm trying to say. So we still get, get a net gain of $2,000 approximately. So let's go ahead and go to the shop again. Once again, I'm going to go to garage. And then I go to, um, I press right and I go to my leased items. It says leased items are at the top there. There's the pot and, and we're going to return it. Boop. That has been returned. And uh, so there we go. And so we're done with this tractor for now. Once again, I think we did, yeah, we sold the secondary tractor, so we just have the two tractors right now, didn't we? Oh, no, we still have all three of them. So one of these tractors you probably could sell unless you want to hire workers like I'm doing here. Um, so you could do some management yourself and then have the other tractors do the work with the workers. With this small equipment, that might actually be the best way to do it is to have three small tractors because uh, that way you can hire somebody and then follow behind them. Like, So let's take a look at the map. 
you can see here um, where Jay is going. She, she's got us, or Julie's going. She's got us up to the second stage of fertilization. There's the first, there's the second. And you can see where Georgette is going. She's got us up to uh, the third stage because that fertilizer is also, or that planter is also putting down fertilizer. Uh, so we have three stages of fertilization, just like we needed in order to do this successfully. And that's good news. I don't know why it's got like a blip in it, though. It looks like she's maybe messed up, but no, it's just the way the map's reading. She's fine. One thing that we do need to do, and look, Georgette just got lost and drove off the to the somewhere. Where is she going? What? <laughs> uh. All right, that's not the way to go. Georgette, you are fired. We're gonna fire Georgette. So press the H button again to let her go. She's gonna have to find work elsewhere because she obviously sucks. You can see that we're halfway out of seed, but we're over halfway down the field, so we'll be able to finish. But you do need to check that once in a while. Once again, you'll get a message that says the helper is um, full. So here she goes. George, who's who's hired now? Is this still G? Let's take a look at the map. Nope. Um, Ivana has now joined us. So if I stand in front of the tractor, she'll stop. And you see that message there says helper I is blocked by an object up in the upper right-hand corner of the screen under my clock. Um, when I move, that goes away. You'll get that same kind of message when um, she runs out of stuff. So she'll, she'll you know, you'll get a text message saying, hey, the tractor's empty and the worker, I, they just leave the tractor. So you'll just go get it. They, you don't have to pay for it while they're sitting there. Uh, they just abandon the tractor. You got to fill it up and hire another worker. So anyway, these guys are underway and we're, we have our seeds planted. I will get back to you once this whole field is planted and we will do some crop growth and talk about growing crops. And once that's done, we've already done the harvesting. So you've seen that happen. And so we are pretty much done with this tutorial. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let these guys do their thing, though, and we'll be right back. First thing I want to show you, you'll notice here, uh, the crops still haven't grown, but you'll notice up in the corner there, it says we have 43,000 or, or, um, or 40, $4,233. That is our operating costs, and that's a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> but that is what it's costing us to run our um, harvester, at least half that. Now, I set these guys to finish the field, and it doesn't look like they, they finished it. But for the all intents and purposes, we're, we can leave that. Weird. I hired a worker to finish this, and they never finished it. That's annoying. Okay. Not sure what happened there. Uh, I showed you guys. We saw the video of them finishing the field, but obviously they didn't finish, so whatever. Okay, so uh, anyway, always check your fields to make sure they're done all the way. If we look at the map, they're not finished. You can see here it's oil seed rat or barley all the way up to here. Oh, that's right. We were planting barley. Okay, well, we'll let the crop grow anyway, but... Um, that's right. We finished the oil seed radish, but obviously the cedar did not finish doing his job. Maybe just, you know, whatever. Anyway, just check and make sure they finish. Um, because right now I'm skunk because I've let time pass. So, uh, because it didn't finish now, these things are not going to grow at the same time. So I'm just going to leave that part of the field blank for now. Uh, anyway, not that it's important to the tutorial, but let's go ahead and I'm going to fast forward time. This is the one mod that I'm using It's called fast forward. It's available on mod hub. I don't think it's available in the game hub. It might be under beta, but uh, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. And we have our first stage of growth. So once again, if we go into our map, we're going to see that right now we have all the fertilization done. Where's there? Except for that one spot that didn't get refertilized. Because we once again, we planted oilseed radish using fertilizer. So, th so that's one stage. Then we cultivated the oilseed radish. That was stage two. And then when we seeded the wheat, we used the seeder that put the fertilizer down again. And so that is stage three. Once again, the game does not care what type of fertilization you do or in what order. You can do it however you want. But three is all that you need. If we hadn't done three, you could take a weeder, uh, one of these things that I showed you earlier in the video, um, which is here. I recommend the bigger one, obviously. This one seeds at the same time, but I'm not really sure what the purpose of this one is. Um, anyway, this guy is the one that I recommend, the Aerostar Rotation 1200. Um, you can use that, and you'll see right here, uh, this is the stage that you want to use that at, and then you'll add your third, second or third, or whatever you're doing. Um, and then we're going to let time pass more. See, it's the next day, 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm just going to fast forward one hour at a time. So we got 10 o'clock, still hasn't grown. 
Okay, there's our next stage. This stage is where you would run a sprayer. If you're going to do a sprayer, this is the spraying stage. Um, I mean, you could do it like once again, you could do it whenever you want, but if you want to be realistic about it, this is when you would run the sprayer. And let's grow some more. And then you're done. You know, if you fertilized right, you'd be finished with your fertilizing stages by now. Um, so it looks like it's going to take us uh, about 36 to 48 hours to grow these crops on normal. So sun's going down. And cr now we're at the third stage of growth. And once again, you can check down the map too. If you go to our growing, you can see here it's third stage right there. It's that matches that dark green. So actually, there's four growing stages. There's the four. So the four stage of growth. The first stage, there's nothing on the ground. The second stage is when you get the little plants, medium, large plants, and then it goes to harvest. And so we're gonna back off the field here. You can see that these are not ready to harvest yet, but they're still growing. And we'll we'll just fast forward to morning. They'll be ready in the morning. Six o'clock in the morning comes, and the crop should swim. Yeah, maybe not. Look, it took all night, and it still didn't finish. There we go. It did. Okay, so I just needed to let it wait. Sometimes that fast forward mod takes a while to update. So at six o'clock in the morning, we have our finished barley, and we're ready to to pick up where we left off with that other uh, harvester. So you're going to get your harvester, and you can go ahead and harvest it. You can also get the straw off the field, and but you're ready to go. So that kind of takes you through the full cycle from harvesting to planting and all that good stuff and and so you guys have seen all of that now in the second tutorial you should have a good idea on how the regular farming works um, and that pretty much is it so once again I screwed up the field over here I didn't I got a spot that didn't grow but whatever uh, so we have all of our, our barley ready and hopefully that helps you guys uh, I the next tutorial I'm, I'm gonna try to figure out what we'll be doing next uh, we do need to cover some of like the potatoes sugar beets like odd crops um, to kind of give you an idea how that stuff works. But um, for now, this is like the standard crop, and that's how that works. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up always help. Hopefully you found this video entertaining and useful and uh, helping you grow your farm. Have a great night, and we will see you next time on Farming Simulator 17.